The Sud de France is an organization that promotes the wine, the food, and the culture of southern France, specifically the Languedoc Roussillon. I am in love with the wines from Languedoc Roussillon, so they sent me out there for five days with a video camera. I visited 10 winemakers and got to see just how magical this place is. The following videos are my experience of the wines that we should be seeing more and more on the American market. Please enjoy. to the vineyards at uh, Chateau de Lancier. 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 Chateau de Lancier. The vineyards and we're going to talk about the soil hopefully and figure out how the magic happens because of course it all starts in the vineyard. That's really what it's all about. But we're going to have the beautiful Pique Saint Louis in the background. Okay, we are here in uh, still in Pique Saint Louis at Chateau de Lancier. I am here with one of the winemakers who has been here for quite some time. Voilà, je suis Bernard Durand, Chateau de la Cire. Euh, nous, nous sommes dans ce pays depuis très longtemps parce que mon arrière-grand-père était là en 1870. Dans le passé, les, les, pays, les agriculteurs de la région étaient vignerons et éleveurs de moutons. Maintenant, ça a disparu. C'est uniquement la vie. Dans ce pays, nous pouvons cultiver que la vie. Alors nous, ce que nous avons fait, les, ter les terroirs à moutons sont devenus des, du vignoble. C'est le vignoble que vous avez visité tout à l'heure. Nous avons défriché environ euh, une quarantaine d'hectares de garrigues au platier Syrah, Grenache, Montvèdre. Et nous avons repris la commercialisation en bouteille en 1984. Mm -hmm. They are making wine for uh, seven generations. Okay. Yeah. But it became the main activity during the 70s, 80s. Before it wasn't bottled. It was just for a local consumption. Oh, it was just for local consumption. consumption. Yeah, and exactly. so in the 70s you started making it for consumer? Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh. And uh, we are working on uh, 65 hectares. That's great. Shiraz, Grenache, and Mourvedre. Our second stop in Pique saint Lou was at Chateau Lancier. This was very exciting for us because we've been carrying Chateau Lancier in our wine shop in New York City for quite some time now. And before we even went into the wine cellar to taste the amazing wines, we had to go into the vineyards to see how the magic starts. Check this out. This is a newly planted vine. That red is a wax to protect it from the weather. We'll show you how that's done in a minute. The Duran family bought this land in 1970 and the vineyard sites were not doing so well so they immediately started tending to the land and bringing some health to the vineyards. Later on they bought new parcels of land, they planted new vineyards and this is where we're at now. One of the reasons you really can't hear the audio that well is because the wind currents in this area are extremely strong. This was December but there's always a wind current somewhere in Languedoc Roussillon and Pique Saint Lou has wonderful wind currents. If you notice, these vineyards are on certain slopes. These slopes are for sun exposure, drainage, but also to catch these wind currents to cool the grapes. And this is what he's showing me now. And we're gonna see the soil in a second, but right here we're talking about, there's a lot of red chalk in the soil. Red chalk, iron, good for the blood, good for the vines. That coupled with the wind currents really is a prime location for all these varietals that they're growing here. Here are some vines that have had some sickness to them, so they pulled the vines up and they're replanting new vines. That's what we saw a little bit earlier, and soon we're going to see the soil and the new vines. This is where it gets very exciting. Oh, and there's a vineyard dog. What is that? It's a, it's a shell. Huh. This is a... It's a it's That's a, what we find when we are digging here. That's amazing. Is that a fossil? Hmm. Fossil. Found a big egg last week. Big egg. 
Might be a dinosaur one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I have never in my life seen a fossil that big up close that I could touch. And apparently these guys find these all the time because the soils are so rocky with wonderful drainage and all that red chalk. And as they plant, they unearth all of this stuff. And that's a good indication of soil composition, good indication of drainage. You saw the slopes, the wind, the sun. This is perfect. Like that we can Adds a wax on it or something? Exactly and here are the new vines, and watch how this is done. This is amazing. So like anything in agriculture, some of the vines have been kind of sick lately, so they've been uprooting the sick vines and replanting brand new vines with red wax on them to protect them from the weather. Watch how this is done. This is all done by hand. This is a wonderful process. They punch a hole in the soil for the vine. Then they grab some compost, give it some nutrients. Snips the root system so that the new roots can start grabbing hold. And just look at that. Beautiful. More compost. What a process this is. This is beautiful. Man in nature. And you can probably tell, look at all the look at all those rocks. Look at that soil, that drainage, those nutrients. It's beautiful. I can see how they'd find fossils. Then you tie it up because we talked about the wind currents and how crazy they are, so you don't want the vine flying away. Tie it up. And voila, there you are. Now how long will it take? for this little guy to start producing fruit. And then to produce, to produce. fruit. Ah, uh, to produce a fruit, yeah, this week. Yeah. And the excitement did not stop there. We stepped away from the vineyards for a little bit because they wanted to show us some of the ancient culture of the area. Languedoc used to be an area where they produced a lot of charcoal. I never knew that. And there are these old houses that were meant specifically for creating that charcoal. And the ruins are still around. So we're on our way to see an old ruined house or hut where men used to sit all night and burn wood and char it to make charcoal out of. Oh, and the vineyard dog had to come along. The rock. Warm up during the night. And here it is. This is so awesome. Here is a old hut, the ruins of an old hut, where they would sit and watch fire burn to make charcoal. It's still around. It's just amazing that this is on their property and here they are kind of giving me an idea of what exactly was going on here. Well, that was just the place where they were sleeping here. Oh, to check oh. the fire. They used to, to burn the wood here. Oh. I don't know if you know how it's working to make uh, charcoal. Charcoal, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just covering the fire to let it burn very slowly. Oh, okay. So okay. that was just the kind of... And they were, this is where they nice. slept. And right before we left, David found yet another little shell. Now, that doesn't necessarily look like a fossil, but, I mean, I don't even know how to explain how amazing this is. Look at that. This is the soil. This is where this wine is being made. Beautiful terroir. And one last stop before tasting wine. This is an ancient church in the area. This was a major church in the area. 
Water has always been very precious in Languedoc. To this day, irrigation is not allowed in the vineyards. So once a year, they would have people coming from all around the area as a procession to pray for water at the church. They would have a festival. And after an incredible journey through the land in which this wine was made, we finally got back to the cellar to taste the wines. The two major white wine grapes in this area are Marsan and Roussan. They make beautiful musky aromatic wines. And one grape that kind of surprised me, Viognier. I didn't realize how prevalent it was in the area. They were telling me that at one time it really wasn't actually. It wasn't really thought about. But because of all the organic agriculture and all the sustainable agriculture they're doing, this grape is doing very well right now and it does wonderful in blends. It was an honor to be able to taste these wines after we had just been in the vineyards. Languedoc Roussillon is filled with balance in their wines, great acidity, beautiful fruit. Sometimes the fruit is deep, sometimes it's bright, but it's always balanced. And the character and the personality of every wine is incredible. The wines open up very wonderfully. The acidity is so nice that every five minutes it's starting to change on us. This is the kind of nose that like messes with me, talks to my soul. Peppery notes, dark currant fruit, but vibrant. That's amazing. The depth, but acidity and pepper, beautiful, it's beautiful. <clears throat> mm. God, that's what, that's what you want. That's what you want. I'm a little concerned because this doesn't happen in California. I'm sorry, people. This doesn't happen. This is beautiful. This is Grenache and Syrah. This is peppery, gamey fruit. We just saw the vineyards. This is why we should be drinking more Languedoc Roussillon in America. The wine spectator gave this 92. 91 points. I think it should be 94, but... <laughs> Languedoc Roussillon is a very important place for wine, and we all should be drinking more of this. This is absolutely beautiful. Man. It's like one of those wines that it, when it hits your palate, your, your brain goes crazy. It's just so good. You're just like, oh my gosh. That's what you want when you drink a wine. Just want to like enjoy it. Like every sip is beautiful. 2007 Grand Cuvée, 90 points. And as we drove away to our next visit, I just couldn't stop talking about how incredible that experience was. You can kind of see me kind of rambling on here. That's why soil is so pop is so important and the ripening process and the currents. And that current was absolutely wonderful. I know it was cold, but I was like, yeah, this is, a, this is cooling the grapes. This is only the first day, our second visit, and my brain was already overwhelmed with how amazing the agriculture is around here, how people tend to the land. The wines are amazing, but it's not just the wine, it's the people. They're humble, they're passionate, and they are absolutely one with the land. You can tell by the way they talk about the wine, by the way they pick up their soils and hold it in their hand lovingly. Or us forcing nature, but in a very <laughs> symbiotic dance in a... Uh, a tango. Thank you, Duran family, for showing us your vineyards, letting us taste your wine, see your culture, and it's an honor for us to sell your wine at our shop in New York City. It's wines like these that are going to help show America the legacy of Languedoc Roussillon and how it will continue from generation to generation to generation.